portraits all the time and that was kind of you know that got old after a while you know somebody wants you to paint it exactly the way it is and I'm kind of stubborn I like to paint my own thing <laughs> so, and I think as you paint for so many years you, you kind of want to loosen up and I'm definitely what you would call a more loose stylized uh, painter rather than a tight realistic uh, painter I'm not that that's just not me but if you want to learn how to be a little bit looser in watercolor, I do teach two classes at the Dunedin Fine Art Center. One is on Tuesday morning, right before this. I taught from 9 to 12, and then also on Thursday afternoon from 12.30 to 3.30. So, come see me. Uh, <coughs> only one more thing. Uh, I've been very lucky to be juried into the Florida Watercolor Society three years in a row. Yeah, and my painting on the edge is still in the traveling show in Orlando, which is over at the end of this month. So I've been blessed there. Uh, on that note, those of you that have been trying to get into watercolor shows or any shows that you want to enter on a more uh, national basis or international basis, don't give up. The competition is severe. For about 15 years, I gave up. Then I finally decided that I was just going to start entering again. And so, you never know. You just don't know. So put it out there, accept the criticism, and move on. That's what I'd like to say. Okay, how many watercolors? Do I have only watercolors in here? Is everybody a watercolorist? Preaching to the choir? Is there anybody that works in the different media? Oh, yay! Okay. <laughs> Buy and watercolor. Okay, I see that. A little bit of both. Awesome. Well, one thing I love about watercolors is that there are just so many techniques, creative techniques, that you can do to create wonderful, interesting textures on your paper. Um, I think it's one I painted in oils when I first started. I've painted in acrylics. I've done pastel. I've taught drawing classes. So I have done a little bit of everything. Uh, but I always keep coming back to watercolor, just because it never ends. There's just always something new and exciting. Every piece of paper, like this painting, I know what I'm going to do, but something will change, and it'll be a new experience. And I think that's really a fun thing. I definitely think it's a fun thing. I'm going to, um, I paint quick, so thank goodness, right? <laughs> I don't have too much time. <laughs> so I'm going to paint quick. I did bring some uh, finished pieces just in case this doesn't work out. I'll put it under the table and I'll put, it, I'll put one of the better ones up here that are framed that you can see. Oh, yeah, I guess she can paint. I guess she can. Uh, <laughs> The piece on the far on the far right that's called Declination Three. That's actually a G clay of a painting that it got into Florida watercolor three years ago, and it is pretty much that size. It's like a cut down full sheet. And then the sand dune here uh, is got in two years ago or one year ago. This was la last year. Got into Florida watercolor. And then the other one is on the edge, and it's just a little quarter sheet, which I thought, Carrie, you can't order a quarter sheet in a big show. So I entered it, and the judge was an architect. And I'm like, oh, God, he's not going to like my work, because architects are just so precise and the drawing. And, and he loved it. He loved my painting. He didn't win an award, <laughs> but he t I spoke to him, and he was very gracious at the convention and just said all kinds of wonderfully very nice things, which just re it sort of re-energized my own you know, self that it's okay to be soft. It's okay to have these soft edges. It's okay to do that. It's okay to splash. I'm a spatterer. I like to spatter and splash, and I'm messy. So that's me. All right, enough talking. And any questions, I'll be glad to answer, but I talk and I'll paint and we'll be done. Chop, chop. Probably 10 minutes. Where I want soft edges, I will wet the paper. Normally when I work in a studio, I will wet the whole, pipe, whole paper 
let it sit so that it can totally expand. Then I'll come back and I'll wet the areas I want to wet for soft edges. Um, I like to leave areas of dry because that gives you those really hard edges in certain places, wherever you want it. It's all about shapes and it's all about edges. Soft edges versus hard edges. Right. The palette's going to be pretty simple today. It's a limited palette. Okay, I'm wetting. I know you can't see what I'm doing because it's dark, but it's okay. We'll just have to deal with it. Um, can you see? You can't see anything. I'm just putting on water. You're not missing anything. It's just water. You haven't, you haven't missed it. I promise. If you're going to mask something in there, like a sail, wind sail or whatever, would you do it before you're doing your wedding? Yes, you yes. Wedding? If I wanted to save any other whites that are special shapes, I would put, I never, I rarely use frisket or misket. I don't like it. Um, I would do a reverse, what I call a reverse stencil instead and lift it afterwards. Um, but I, I do teach all that fun stuff in my class. Told you I'm messy. Okay, the problem is going to be if I can see the color here. All right, uh, those of you that like to know what I'm using, this is just ultramarine blue. I mix my blues. I think it's important no matter what media you work in that within each shape you should have a color change and a value change within each shape. It makes it more interesting and vibrant. Okay, hopefully you can see there is paint going on now. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm putting just the wet to wet sky in right now. I've never really painted in the dark. <laughs> it's a new experience, you know. I'll be like, um, I've been very fortunate to the most of my study. I have a, a a master's degree in adult education. I've been a teacher for forty some years, so I do teach pretty much a lot of stuff. But um, as far as learning and art, I've been very very lucky to study with just wonderful artists that have shared their work. There really isn't any other better way. You know, it's kind of like the old school, the old Renaissance, you know, where you had an apprenticeship and you studied under the master. I mean, it's fabulous. Not to put down art schools, okay? Art schools are great. You can learn there. Okay, let me pay attention to what I'm doing. All right, we need to put some shadows in here. Those are shadows. Shadows. All right. I told you I'm messy. Okay, but I like it. It's fun. Okay, that probably is not wet enough. Ooh, like that. All right. I kind of like that. Okay, we'll go that way. That looks fun. All right. Burn Sienna. These are just very traditional, very traditional limited palettes. One thing I... I've learned in entering jury shows, I like to paint my crazy colorful things, but they don't get in. Value paintings get in. So if you're, if you're working towards that goal, I would encourage you to work on those values because that's it. That's what it's about. You gotta get those values in. All right. Now I'm doing wet into wet, what I call my um, my fuzzy grass here. It's my fun fuzzy grass. All right. And I think I, I'm not sure which color I'm dipping in. Okay, I think that's burnt sienna. Here we go. Kind of like my typewriter here. Carrie, what values? I forget. What value? Values are the lightness and darkness of okay. your color. All right. It's great to have 
um, good shapes but you need to make sure that you get and I think in watercolor one of the things that's so difficult in watercolor kill that um, is that you've got to get those values, you've got to get the light and dark. You've got to get that contrast going. If you don't have any contrast, it's going to be a little on the boring side. Okay. Alright. Fun. Alright, let's see. Alright, done. No, I'm kidding. No, don't. Okay. Okay. It's a little blue, but forgive me because I really can't tell what I have on my palette. <laughs> when I put it on the paper, they go, hmm, okay, that's a little blue. Oop. <laughs> All right. I'm working on it. Where's my brush? All right, I got it. I got it. This is it. Very. This is fun. So when you're doing watercolors, one of the really important things, is especially when you're working wet and wet like this, you need to watch the page because it doesn't all dry the same. Like this area up here is getting dry and if I go back in there right now with a wet wash I'm gonna have this huge big snake like looking thing water blossom I don't want that okay. this is really wet in here so I can drop a little wet but that's too wet alright so controlling it you can control watercolor but you have to know how you have to know what to lift what not to lift when to lift it, when not to lift it. And if you learn all that, then you're great. You got it. I'm trying to get a little darker there. Okay, I haven't done any fun spatter yet. Let's do it. I have to laugh. I, I took a workshop this past summer up at um, Cheap Joe's with Sterling Edwards. I love Sterling's work. I've loved it for a long time. Um, <laughs> but every painting, and when he gets done to the very end of this painting, has anyone else studied with Sterling? You have. You've studied with Sterling. Anyway, I don't know if he did this when you studied with him, but at the very end of the painting, he gets out a little teeny brush like this, and he'll go like this, and he'll go, I spatter everything. And I, I don't know, I just kind of laughed because I'm like, <coughs> okay, that's not spattering. This is spattering. <laughs> this is spattering. All right, I'm looking for the right time. I love salt. Um, I don't know if we have time for salt. I don't know if we have time for salt. We have time for salt? Okay, we'll do salt. I may have to dig the hair dryer out so y'all don't get bored. Alright, right, salt. So what salt does, it makes fun little fun little sparkles. Let me put a few up here. Not too many. Okay, and then you throw it over your left shoulder, right shoulder. Is it sea salt? Yes, it is sea salt. And actually one of my students hooked me onto this because I used to carry three different containers of salt with me. Little salt, medium salt, big salt. Oh no, now you have sea salt and it's got this little grinder that you can adjust the size of your salt. How wonderful is that, you know? This is little salt I use today. What brand adjusts? What brand, what brand has the adjustment in it? I've, I've got McCormick? McCormick. Oh. Yeah. Oh, McCormick. McCormick Sea Salt Grinder. Yeah, and then you can eat it. I love salt. All right, let's see. I think this is almost ready for scraping. Let's scrape out some grass. Hey, fun. Can't make it as big back here though. That's just the sharp end of the brush. No, it's a special brush. 
All right, this is an Aquarelle brush. This is a cheap Aquarelle brush. An expensive Aquarelle brush. Um, because the scraper is not that great. I don't have, do I have a good one? Yeah, I have a better one. Grumbacher. This is an old Grumbacher brush. You can see that it comes to a much better point. It's okay. Hey, you know. TGE. You know what TGE is? That's good enough. It's good enough. That's good enough. All right. Okay, so we're going to dry this. Okay, I might have to get my hair dryer out so I can finish this. Or I can talk. How much time do we have? Huh? Whenever you're ready. We have plenty of time? Okay. Um, I ask a question. Yes. Blooms. Blooms. I asked Jim one time too, and he showed me because he's splattered. Sometimes I get a bloom, and then I've got to try to fix the bloom. Okay. Why am I getting a bloom? Blooms happen when you have too much water in your brush, and you put it on a drying area. So if the area, like right now, this is kind of like. This is kind of dull, but it's still wet. Mm -hmm. So if I were to spatter now with water, I would get blooms. Okay. Um, they're so like I four. Let it dry first before I was going to add anything to it. Well, that's why you have to watch the paper. Like up here, it's real shiny. So I could still add stuff up here, but I can't add it down here because right now it would just kind of sit there and not move. So if you want it to move like here and grow up, it's got to be wet. Now it's growing up because it was only wet on top. It didn't grow down that much because that area was dry. Although you can tell, it's a little wet, but that kind of looks cool. It looks like a little, one of those little sand edges or something. Yeah. I can hold it up. Yeah, I can hold it up. It's not going to hurt. Alright. This is what we have so far. This way. Any other questions? Am I waiting for this to dry? <laughs> At this stage is when you go get another cup of coffee or you go get a glass of wine. That's better. <laughs> Makes it easier to finish. Um, in the dunes? Yeah. Mm, sometimes. I've just started using purples in the shade. Gotcha. But I didn't know if we Um probably not in this one because I've already got some shadows going. I've already got some going that are okay. Mainly they're pretty good. I'm sorry. What colors have you used so far? Burnt sienna. Because burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is closer to the complement. Mm -hmm. Ultramarine blue is your kind of main go-to blue. But I mixed it with Prussian. So it's not just ultramarine. It's two blues mixed together, which makes it, I'm a blue that's not out of the tube. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's good to have that because they, you know, it's different. You want to make it a little bit different. It doesn't matter with your painting in acrylics or oils. It really doesn't matter. You want to make it a little different, you know, but it's still blue. Still blue. All right. <coughs> I think it's probably about the right, hopefully. Let's see if I can see the color here. Probably shouldn't use that color.
Mm, that's really not a good color. Oh, goodness. All right. All right, we're going to put some water in. But what I'd like to do for the water is when I paint, this was all wet into wet. So it's a wet, soggy brush on a wet surface. That's wet and wet. Now I'm going to paint dry on dry. You say dry? Yeah. My brush is fairly dry. I can take excess water out of my brush at the ferrule, but it's loaded with paint. I'm not taking the paint off. I'm just taking the water out of my brush. And I'm picking a brush that isn't a mop brush. You don't want to use a big mop brush because that holds too much water if you're painting dry on dry. Unless you're painting a huge big full sheet and you just want to go That's okay too. Alright, I like to paint the horizon line with a, a flat brush. I don't know if I can go straight, but I'll try. Okay. Alright, it's humped a little. Sorry. It's really not the color I wanted. That's alright. A dry brush creates these wonderful, fun little waves coming in. Tuck that behind the dune. Tuck that behind there. Which color am I going to? Whoops. All right. It should be getting lighter as I come forward, but not getting lighter, getting darker. Suck it up. Suck it up and make it lighter. Cut the wave down a little, too big. And a little bit of yellow in the foreground of the water because you know as the water comes closer to you it gets greener and lighter just a little bit. So we're not going to do a lot, just a little. I'm having too much fun with the water. Stop. Okay. The water's there. It could disappear back here. Get a little dark at the horizon line, but it's all right. I'm going to forgive myself because I can't see what's on my palette. <laughs> all right. All right, it's too dry now. Can't scrape anymore. But the salt's working. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it on there? Not really. All right, let me hold it up. Can you see the salt working? Okay, hopefully the salt is working a little bit there. All right, now I'm not going to wait. Normally what I would do is I'd wait for the salt to dry. Then I would um, wipe it off. And we can do this sanding in the workshop if you want, or we can paint flowers. I don't care. Whatever you want to paint is fine with me. We can paint fish. I don't care. We can paint abstracts. I really don't. Three hours, we could paint five paintings. You could. No, you can. I, mean, I think that's one thing I like about watercolors. Like I said, I have painted in oils. Started in oils, but it takes a long time. I don't know how much longer I'm going to live. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have enough time for that. <laughs> I know. God bless, you know. All right, let's let's speed this up. All right, speed it up. Now, when Sterling does this fun little trick too, when he does a wash like that and it's dry with a hair dryer, he'll sprinkle water on there, and then he just takes a, a clean towel and he scrubs it, and it comes up with these fun little whites. You hear me, Sterling? You hear me? Telling your secrets. They're not going to pay. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to put a fence in there for you. And I, I don't really want to put in a fuzzy fence. Fuzzy fence is not going to work. 
It needs to have hard edges. Well, most fences aren't fuzzy. Okay. All right, we're coming to the home stretch. If I can find my. There it is. I'm going to brush some of this salt off so I don't take it all home. But I'll leave these the salt. All right, I kind of cheat. I cheat with my fences. <clears throat> I like to do stampings. Stampings are fun. I studied with a man named Bud Shackelford, again in California, another California watercolor guy. And um, almost all of his paintings were done with stampings. He would stamp with whatever. He'd kick his shoe off and stamp with it. I seriously. No, seriously. Some of these people are... They're out there. <laughs> They're out there. They really are. But but they come. But he might stamp with his shoe. But that becomes the opening to a cathedral. It's a shape. So you know he'll take this shape. He'll stamp with these shapes and turn them into these fabulous buildings and stuff. It's really fun. Um, and so this is a very small little piece of that. I use mad board to paint my fences. So I stamp them in because it's more fun. It's looser. It's funner. Definitely funner. Okay. I have my um, my ultra blue and my burnt sienna right next to each other. Now I'm going to have to move over because I can't see what I'm painting here. I can't see what I'm mixing. There we go. All right. What I'm trying to mix is a good dark, but I want it to be more on the brown side than the blue side. I don't want a blue fence. I have blue dunes, so I want to have more of a brown fence, but I don't want it to be what I call baked potato brown. It needs to be a nice, you could use umber, but I'm a firm believer too of, of sticking to your palette. So if you stick to the colors that are in your palette and work with the values, I think you end up with a more successful painting. I've done both. All right, so you load up your mat board, and here comes the fence. Just stamp it in. Oops. It's okay. Fix that. running out of stuff already. This is my paper isn't flat. I'm not getting a good stamp. But you get the idea. Yeah, the paper is curling. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Well, they're, they're saying it's it, it, it's interfering with what they're seeing. And oh, really? You know, I don't know whether that helps. Or oh. Is that blocking you even more? Is it blocking more? It's, it's okay. You can see brush. right up in the, the end of the brush. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. What, can't you see this? Yeah. yeah, great. There you go. Speak up. <laughs> okay. Yes. Don't usually put this in while the paper is still wet like this. No, <laughs> so it's okay. All right, let's have it fall down. You know, these dune fences have been through a lot. Lots of wind, lots of um, hurricanes. There. Backside. Pick the size that's right. We're going to put essence of fence back here. Just a little bit. I have a little bit left. Okay. Shout it in one place, whisper it in another. Okay. That was fun. Shall we do it over here too?
And it's okay if it's lighter, see? It's supposed to be lighter. It's farther away, right? Too dark. Too dark. Too dark. Too dark. Okay, we'll be Pat Dews now. Anybody ever hear of Pat Dews? Yes. Okay. Whatever she does, I swear, whatever brush stroke she puts on, fabulous. That's fabulous. I said, I'm stealing that one. That's fabulous. Oh, I love it. She does. Have you, have you seen her do that? Have you seen her? I'm sorry. I, just... I think she's done some of uh, the, the small demos at the watercolor uh, convention. Yeah. And, yeah. Have you seen her do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. I like it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, how much more positive can you be? You need to be positive because if you go, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I'm afraid to put that on there. It's not good. You got to go put it in there. All right, the final details I'd put in would be some grass, some positive grass. Ooh, okay, that didn't work. That's okay. Fabulous. <laughs> I love it. That was a really good one. Up here, they have to be smaller. Smaller grass. Woohoo. Okay, just a few. Not too many. Overlapping. This is a script liner, yeah, or a rigger. A script liner or a rigger. You can really paint a good watercolor with three brushes. A script liner, a number eight round, and a good flat. That's all you need. And I have three more sets of brushes at home. Well, your big, your big blue brush for your, your, yeah, wash. your wash. Right. Brush. Well, you, and you, a big, if you're going to paint big, you do need a good two-inch flat. And this is an inexpensive one. I have a $100 one that I'm afraid to use. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Don't we all do that? We buy, buy oh, my gosh. Yeah, I broke down at the convention last year. You know, I told my friend I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't buy this brush. So I bought it. <laughs> Where is it? It's over there. But you know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to get great value at your, your, your estate. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. They won't even know <laughs> how much I paid for that brush. But now I can say I have it. I don't know. I have, I've taught a lot of students, and God bless them. I love all my students dearly. Um, you know, but a lot of them go, well, I spent a lot of money on the say 